Welcome to the pilot episode of Real Life, Real Gospel. I am your host, Josh Laborious. I, I host this podcast. We try to release every Thursday, or at least we will, because as I mentioned immediately before, this is the pilot episode. Um, in case you missed our trailer, every week we're just gonna we're gonna take a topic proposed by you guys, the audience, and we're gonna dissect it and we're gonna look at what the Bible has to say about it, what kind of common sense has to say about it in addition to that, and hopefully have some some helpful analysis going forward. Um, if you are curious about other details about the show, if you're wondering what is this show that I'm now listening to about, we did release a trailer on December 30th. If you would like more of a little bit of a background, that trailer is an excellent place to go. But we are going to go ahead and get into our first topic. And our first topic was proposed by uh, Ian Heinze via Facebook. And his question was, what media should Christians consume? And I think this is a question that comes up for us a lot. If you just think about it, because we have so much access to media in our world. Uh, some of it's really good, some of it is not so good, and we're going to kind of look at where should Christians draw the line when it comes to this stuff. Um, so with that, I do I want to start every topic we have with a little bit of scripture that relates in some way to the topic at hand. So First, we have Psalm 101, verses 1 through 4, where it says, I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. I will ponder the way that is blameless. O when will you come to me? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. And here, here's the part I really want us to key in on. We have, I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. So, the first part I want to key in here on this as we're talking about it together is, I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. So, I guess my my question going forward regarding media is what is worthless. And if we think about it, we can define it a couple different ways, but the the definition that I settled on as I went back and forth on this topic was anything not of the gospel, anything not of Christ is worthless. Um because ultimately it doesn't it doesn't matter. If we get down to it at the end of our lives, it's not going to matter what kind of sports teams we liked or what kind of of music we followed or what we saw or liked or shared on social media, what kind of activities. None of this is really going to matter when you compare it to the gospel because that's how we're saved. That's how we, we receive eternal life. So... Nothing is is worth it except for the gospel. And continuing through this verse, because we're gonna we're gonna apply this to media eventually, but I want to get through the rest of the verse. It says, I hate those, I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. And it says, I will know nothing of evil. And at this point, we we can recognize that this psalm is a little bit of hyperbole. It's a little bit of exaggeration. You see, because it's impossible for you or I to know nothing of evil at all. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, first of all, there's our sinful nature. So we we know something of ourselves. So we know something of evil. But we're we're in a broken world. So the reality is... Whether we want to or not, we know something of evil. Now it says, it shall be 
far from me, it shall not cling to me. Now, this is something different. We're talking um, about not letting it become part of who we try to be going forward. And this talks a little bit about the sanctified life as far as a Christian is concerned. So we're surrounded by this evil. We see this evil. It's in our lives. But we don't let it cling to us. We don't allow ourselves to live that way. You see, in real life, we're surrounded by the worthless, by perverse hearts, by evil. I mean, if you want to go through the Ten Commandments, I'm sure we can point out something in in everyday life that violates them. So we start with, you shall have no other gods before me. And we constantly see people setting other things up as gods, power, money, success, fame. I mean, it's a little bit cliche, but it's true. You see, you shall not make for yourself any idol nor bow down to it. Our media is full of false idols. You go to politics. Politics is a huge false idol for people on both sides of the aisle. You have, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. There are, I would be hard pressed to find popular media that doesn't misuse the Lord's name in some way. Uh, You shall remember and keep the Sabbath day holy. Football. The entire, I, I saw a quote from a commercial once that said, you can't go to war with the NFL. They own a day of the week. Sunday. Respect your father and mother. You shall not commit murder, adultery. You shall not steal. All of these are things that regularly happen on the media we consume regularly. You shall not give false evidence. You shall not be envious of your neighbor's goods. We go through all of these things. And it surrounds us. This is worthless these are perverse hearts this is evil and I'm, I'm not speaking down to anybody like i i enjoy this stuff too one of my favorite shows is family guy which if you don't know is a radically inappropriate television show so i'm on the same level with you guys but i we have to recognize that we can't let this stuff cling to us so that's that's the real life portion of this. We're surrounded by this stuff that we ought to put far from us. But the real gospel, the second part of this is that Psalm 101 speaks to us, is God speaking to us about his character. You see, because all of this, all this second part we that we read is in comparison to the first part. To you, O Lord, I will make music. I will ponder the way that is blameless. All of this is compared with praising God. And what we look at is that the perverse, the evil, the negative, it clings to us. And we're looking at that in comparison with praising God. And I think the core of this psalm that we can take away into our real-life application when it comes to the media is that it really comes down to how it impacts us which which sounds a little self-centered even as i say it it sounds a little self-centered um but i think it we we have to look at how it influences us and those who consume it And what this does is it leads us into our our second scripture reading. It leads us into the Gospel of Mark. And we're going to look at Mark 9, verses 42 through 50, if you're following along. Um, It says, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. For those of you who don't know, if you had a great millstone hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea, you would drown. These were big, heavy rocks. If it was tied around your neck and you were thrown into water, you would be dead. Continuing, and if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. 
It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. So, what I want to pull out of this passage for, for us to think about, for us to talk about, is this is all talking about the impact of things causing to sin. And it's, it's talking about the impact of things on both kinds of righteousness. You see, there are two ways for us to be, to be righteous. To, and the best definition that I have of righteousness, I, I know I promised to limit theological language, but I think this word is pretty useful, um, is if you are righteous with someone, it means you are in a right relationship with them. But righteousness is shorter than saying you're in a right relationship with someone. So I'm going to stick with righteousness. But that is the definition I am operating with. You see, and when we t I talk about two kinds of righteousness, there's a righteousness before God. And that depends solely on faith generated by the Holy Spirit. If we have faith, our relationship with God is right because he declares it so. The other kind of righteousness I talk about is with our with our fellow man, with brothers and sisters um, in Christ, with people outside the faith as well, and having right relationship with them. A lot of that is what God's commandments are there for. He tells us, here's how you have a right relationship with someone. And we think of it a lot as common sense, but I think, personally, I think that's just because God's law is written on our hearts. But like, don't murder people. That's if you murder someone, all their friends and family are not going to be in a right relationship with you. If you commit adultery, you're not in a right relationship with your, your wife or your significant other anymore. If you steal, if you give false evidence, if you're envious, all of these things kind of naturally result in your relationship with people being broken. So what this is all talking about, at first it, it talks, if you're causing others to sin, it's better for you to die. And then it goes into if, if it's causing, if these things are causing you to sin, it is better for you to put them out of your life than it is for you to risk these right relationships that you have. And then a final kind of bit of explanation on the passage, it, it talks about everyone will be salted with fire. What this is, salt is in, in context. Salt is what is used as a preservative. Even today, salt is used as a preservative. If you want to keep something from going bad, you put a ton of salt in it. Actually, my dad found out this the hard way. You, you also have to use a certain kind of salt. My dad makes salsa from scratch. It's phenomenal. We have a couple gardens in, in the back, or they have a couple gardens in their backyard, and he makes this salsa from scratch. And at one point, he decided to put sea salt in it which apparently doesn't have quite the preservative properties of just table salt. I didn't know this, but uh, we found out because about three days, he made like a gallon of salsa, and about three days later, it was vile. It had gone totally bad, and the only thing that was different was the salt, but whenever he uses normal salt, this stuff was good for a couple weeks before it started to even go a little bad. So salt is kind of this preservative, and then fire is a purifier. So when he's saying, for everyone will be salted with fire, he's talking about uh, purification and also a, a preservation. So that's kind of this background of the passage and some things I want to pull forward for you. But moving into real life, we're talking about media, and we're connecting it with this idea of what causes us to sin. And I would say, what causes you to sin, what causes me to sin, is totally 
subjective. For example, I have stopped caring about politics at all. So when I watch politics on the news, whether it be left-leaning or right-leaning, I don't really get upset anymore. I don't hate my brothers and sisters because of the things they're saying. However, if you still genuinely care about politics and you are very um, supportive of one side or the other and you watch the other side on television, that can cause you to sin because it can cause you to hate your brother and sister. Now, we might have to work on that because you might have an idol in politics. But causing this, this interaction with politics is causing you to sin. And this works both for, for example, if you are a, a extremely conservative Trump supporter. Watching something like CNN where they're reporting on some of the things that Trump doesn't do so well... Um, that might cause you to hate your liberal brothers and sisters. And at the same time, if you're if you are far left leaning liberal and you watch Fox News and you see them saying that Trump is the greatest thing in the world, you, that might cause you to hate um, to hate your conservative brothers and sisters. And both of these are problematic because Christ tells us you are not to commit murder. But even if if you hate your brother in your heart, you're in the same place. So that's that's just one example of sin being subjective. And for example, I might be able to watch a show that um, has a like Family Guy that has a lot of inappropriate jokes and it doesn't lead me to disrespect people in my life. It doesn't lead me to commit uh, to hate my brother and sister to to commit adultery, to lust after things, uh, all, all these various things. But someone who is more easily uh, influenced, might watch a show like that and be led into sin. And I can come up with example after example, I'm sure you can too, of places where the media we take in, the music, the TV, the social media, whatever you take in, I'm sure you can think of instances where it could cause you to sin or it could cause others to sin even if it doesn't cause you to sin. So what I want you to do is to genuinely consider these things. And now this is one of the benefits of, of this being a podcast and not a in-person conversation with me. Because if this was an in-person conversation, I would sit there and I would say, whatever your name is, let's talk about these things. That could be an awkward conversation. I understand that. So this being a podcast, I'm just going to put it on you to genuinely consider. How can blank lead you into sin. And as you're listening to this, I don't know if you are just listening to it because you think it's interesting, or maybe you have a specific media in mind that you are concerned about. A lot of people were games of Game of Thrones fans, and people were concerned about that being um, sinful to partake in. Are you worried about social media? Are you worried about the music you listen to? Are you worried about the shows, the news, the sports? Whatever you watch... Whatever you consume, I want you to genuinely consider. Is it leading you into sin? Could it lead you into sin? Because as we look at Mark, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If that media causes you to sin, cut it off. Whether it be uh, sports or TV or movies or music. Um... And my question going forward from that is how far do we take it? Now, yes, we can go to extremes. I'm a pretty dedicated person. I'm a pretty creative person. And if you were to submit anything to me, I'm pretty sure I could come up with a way that it would lead you into sin. Even take worship. Take Christian worship. You're going to church on Sunday and you're worshiping. Traditional, contemporary, I don't care. That worship can become an idol and it can become more about the music or the words or the creeds or the prayers than it is about the God that we're worshiping, that we're praying to, that we're confessing before. Anything 
can become something that leads us into sin. But at this point, I want to talk about Christ, which is the focus of everything. And these extremes, that's not how Jesus talks. He eats with tax collectors and sinners regularly, repeatedly. You see, because while everything has the potential to lead you into sin, not everything does. And if it doesn't lead you to sin, it can be a great missional opportunity. For example, I'm sure there are ways that watching football can lead you into sin, but I knew a buddy in, in seminary. He hates football. And I told him, I said, you may hate football, but how many people in your future congregation will you be able to talk to and connect with on that level of football? You see, I can be in a restaurant or a bar with a football game on, and I can start up a conversation with a total stranger about football. And that can be an, a missional opportunity, an opportunity to witness to someone. With that, I want to lead into our, our third and our final Bible passage for today, and that is Romans 12. Romans 12, 2. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and and acceptable and perfect. So what I want to boil this conversation about media to is living sacrificially. I want to explain what that means though because like I said, it's a that's a little bit of theological language. People like to hide behind theological language. I want to be perfectly clear in what I mean. When we say we live sacrificially for Christ, we're saying our behavior is subject to Christ. Why are you clinging to something? In the beginning, like we were talking about, are you are you letting is something clinging to you because it is evil, because it is wicked, because it's leading you to sin? Or are you clinging to something for Christ? So with all of this, it's a question of motive. Is the reason you're holding on to something? Is the reason you're watching something, consuming something? Is it for Christ? Or is it for you? Because you can't serve two masters. Ultimately, one has to make the decision. So what we're looking at is testing what is the will of God. What are you building up in yourself or in others? So what does this mean? The real life, the real reality of this is that this is not how most of us were raised to live. This isn't how our culture acts. This isn't how our culture lives. You see, we're lived, as long as you're not hurting someone else, do whatever you want. And to put a Christian veneer on that, as long as you're not directly leading someone else into sin, as long as you're not being led into sin, do whatever. But I think what we should be getting at is a complete turnaround of that, is how can you build others up in how you consume media? in what you watch, in what you listen to. So the, the real gospel, I actually, I have a, a song clip for you, uh, just an introduction. Did you hear what it said in there? Murmur, murmur, murmur. Why am I this way? Make war. There is stuff out there that is watchable. At the same time, there is stuff that as Christians we probably should not watch. And I'm going to stop hedging my language. We should not, we definitely should not watch. But we should do it all living for Christ. So should we watch popular TV shows, even though there is a little bit of inappropriate language and behavior in them? I would say yes, because that's going to give you some, some level of connection that will allow you to witness to people. Now, on the same page, should we watch something that is radically inappropriate, 
that isn't very popular? And I would say no, because you're, you're encouraging, you're supporting something that could be leading people into sin and you're not really going to be able to leverage it for the gospel. So closing, you get through this whole thing and our original question is, what media is acceptable for Christians to watch? Here is my answer for you. Media is subjective and you have two questions to answer. Is it causing you to sin and is it building up the kingdom? If the answer is no, it's not causing you to sin and it's building up the kingdom, yes, you should watch it. If it's causing you to sin, cut it off. Is it not building up the kingdom, but it's not causing you to sin? That I will leave up to you. But if it is not building up the kingdom and it has the potential to cause others to sin, cut it off. If it is not good, cut it off. And remember that just because it's popular doesn't make it right. This has been Real Life, Real Gospel. I would like to thank again Ian Heinze, um, good friend, good good soccer player, good goalie, who suggested the topic. If you have a topic that you want to hear me talk about, that you want to hear us talk about, I would love for you to submit it. Um, you can message me on Facebook. That's Joshua Laborious on Facebook. Or you can email vicar at stpaulboca.com. This has been Real Life, Real Gospel. Go in peace, brothers and sisters.